Hello everyone, Master Zeon 1001 here, and in this video I'll be showing you how to use Hard Ops and Box Cutter to create an insert for Kit Ops that will allow you to have a nice uh, inner fillet on your finer parts of the mesh while having a larger bevel for the areas where it actually meets with the larger mesh. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Alright, getting started, we'll press Alt Shift C to turn on screencast keys, then G, Z, minus 1 to put the cube below the floor. I'll press the period button to set my scaling point to the cursor. Press S, Shift, and Z to just scale this out just for this example. We'll add a cylinder and tap in edit mode, grab the sloop, just kind of bring it up a little bit. Take this one, bring it down, and we'll control B, bevel it in order to get it flush with this surface. Let's try that again. So now we have it flush with the surface. From here, I'll shift D, duplicate it, and I started rotating it, but I realized that it would actually be more ideal to just get it right here, and then just press Alt-Z, I mean Alt-X to bring up the interactive mirror in hard ops, and we'll use bisect this time, and that'll allow us to get a shape like this. So we'll scale it up, and now we have something like this as our shape for getting started. I'll press comma to make uh, the pivot back to normal. So now let's get started. We'll take this bigger cylinder and control plus. We'll take this one and control numpad minus. We'll press H to hide both of these for a moment. And what we have here we can't completely see just yet. So I'll shift A, add another cylinder, S. Shift Z to scale on everything but Z, and we see that we got some um, negative results here. So let's turn off one of these and let's bring both of them back. We'll hide that and we will take this cut in, we'll take this one and also cut in. And let's just grab this shape and get it where we want. And let's also change the uh, boolean priority here. Clicking it appeared to do nothing so we'll just leave that. So this is basically what we're creating here. A series of three booleans um, which we'll be going into more in depth whenever we get into the um, insert creation portion. The interesting thing about this particular one is this one determines what is um, being cut in as the ring. So let's uh, play with that idea. First thing I'll do is rebase this. So S sharpen it, add a little sub D, convert it, and that'll just give us something a little better here. I'll press I, E, and S to extrude. We'll control I to delete all the faces. We'll put a loop in the middle, use control B to offset it, delete the faces. We're just going to select a loop in the middle, control plus, and then just delete everything else. So now from here, we can select these two edges and control shift B to bevel the vertices. We will symmetrize it to the other side. And from here, we can press spacebar and use the spin command. Because our cursor is right in the center, when we use spin, it will spin around the cursor. We hit duplicate change this to 360, lower the amount, and we'll actually go with 5. Last time I went with 3, this time we'll use 5, and so this is what we have, and when we apply thickness to it, this will actually be our thickness cutting grate, resulting in a uh, more interesting insert. So to finally bring this all together, let's uh, put one more piece in here. So I'm going to shift A, insert a plane, the goal with all these kid ops videos is to um, mix in education about hard ops, box cutter, and blender in general with um, instructing how to use this tool at the same time. To back up here, because you might have missed that, is I took this plane, I pressed W subdivide, W subdivide, W subdivide, W subdivide, and then Alt P, 
then Alt J, Alt P will poke faces, Alt J will requadulate a selection. From here we'll double tap I, which will give us a individual face inset. From here we'll delete faces. And with one level of subdivision, we've created a grading circular. So to finish this off, I will Alt-C, convert that to mesh, giving us this. I will Shift-A, insert a circle, and with and circle from the um, Bezier menu. I've been doing edge project with that lately. And we'll Shift-Select our grade, tab into edit mode, and choose knife project and cut through from the F6 menu. We'll press P which will separate and from here we'll just delete the ring. We'll also delete the curve. We no longer need it and we have our floor. So from here we can add thickness but with um, solidify I want to press R that way it's only the rim, and if we look at this, it looks like a solid floor, but if we look on the other side, there's no um, other side. So from here, we can C-sharp, but we want to hold shift uh, and when we bring up the F6 and choose solidify, because we don't want to apply solidify with C-sharp at this time. We want to keep it dynamic. And so from here, I'm going to select everything and use my shift tilde, select boundary loops which is located under the select menu and we'll press Q mark sharp and we will just lower to be with until we get something like that and now we actually have our insert so from here let's uh, hide the cube hide everything let's just talk about naming for a moment so with these sort of things I tend to go with a uh, very specific naming structure which is in fact, let's look at the cube. Um, it has all our booleans. One, two, three. Cylinder is a union. So we'll locate cylinder. And in the end panel, we will just call this C1U. And just copy that over. And the second one is cylinder 001. We'll call this C2. And the final cut is cylinder 02. We'll just call this C3. And this will just be the OB. All right, so really simple naming convention here, but it'll just make more sense when I copy and paste this over into my other scene. So I'll use Control C and Jesus take the will in this situation. I'll press Control Shift O. And we'll just open the blank template scene that I'm used to working with. And I'll just press Control V to paste everything there. And so now we can take this object, mark it as a cutter, mark it as a union, mark it as the primary. And then we'll select everything and just manually parent it to it just to make sure. And we'll select this one, make sure it's a difference cutter. Make sure this one's marked as nothing, and make sure this one is also a cutter. So from here, we'll save this, and we'll just call this In fact, I accidentally put an exclamation point there. So tut great circular one underscore one. And we'll save it. And let's hold control and just see what it looks like. So this is our thumbnail also getting uh, text messages of people asking where I'm at and what's up so you know what that means guys and we've rendered our thumbnail so now let's make a new file let's go into kit ops and under the prim pack we'll use the search function because proxy says I'd never use it and let's insert our circular so the interesting thing about this is whenever we take this and we use C-Sharpen, it's a disaster. Why is it a disaster? Well, that's a couple of things. Let's actually go back to the file and the naming structure will actually work out for us here. Um, because what we want to do is take this 
and control numpad minus, and then take this and control numpad minus. But before that, we want to select this top area and just inset, inset, giving this some loops to work with. And then from here, we can actually C sharpen and see what we have here. So you see here at the time that we're sharpening this that all of our weights are currently being set to 1. And what we want to do is go under B weight and press Control A and lower those weights to maybe 0.2. And we will also go take this time to uh, definitely remove the bevel modifier because I never bevel bevels using a bevel. Just breaks the time space continuum. So we'll save this as an incremental version and we'll look at it as a thumbnail and it looks almost exactly the same except this one is actually set up for C sharpen more adequately. So I'll make a new file and we'll go under kit ops and under prim pack we will locate TUT, tut great circular and we'll insert it and things look kind of crazy but whenever we take this and C sharpen it things are looking much better here however we still have some issues with um, with the mesh here so these are things we can go in and correct but the uh, biggest thing is that somehow we are losing our ability to see the grates here so let's look at this control shift O let's open the insert and the troubleshooting process that I go through in uh, making these inserts is something I kind of wanted to show in these videos so that way the troubleshooting would also have a um, good amount of coverage. We'll take this face here. Working in wire mode can be a little tricky sometimes. And we'll take this and fill that in. We'll select the bottom, fill that in. We'll save it. Let's make a new file. TUT. And let's give this an insert. Perfect. So now we actually have our insert inserting with the custom weight. A little overshot there. But we're still not seeing our floor we probably just need to bring it up and that'll be fine so let's go in our file one more time let's also press alt H to hide anything unhide anything that shouldn't be here let's just bring this up maybe flush with the surface this is still the main object we'll save it control N and for the finale insert circular and now we have our insert inserting looking great might I add let's insert one here and also looking great both of them seem to still be retaining their custom bevel weights this is something that I worried about in previous versions when dealing with inserts and custom weighting but it's something that you know, once it's working adequately, I did want to expand in the future. And believe it or not, I'm definitely getting a phone call right now. So with that, I'll be seeing you in the next video.